What is up, people? Van from the Vanerous Gaming Channel here with another video. Today's video is going to be my review of the winter update for Celasta Crown of the Magister. I feel that with this update, the game has enough content now that it's worth picking up in early access. Uh, I did make a Should I Buy video back uh, two months ago, and I think the price point was a little high, for the $34.99 or whatever it is, for the amount of content you got. You could blow through this if you know what you're doing in probably six hours. Um, if you spend a little bit more time, maybe 10, but now with the winter update, you can now probably put in about 20 plus hours in the game. And I feel like that that's enough with the current sale going on, the Steam winter sale that goes through January 5th of 2021. The game's price is $27.99 right now. So I feel like if you were going to buy it or you were interested in it or you had it wish listed, now's the time to probably pick it up because you're going to get enough enjoyment out of the current content. And then pretty much any content from this point on is just going to be icing on the cake, so to speak. So with that being said, I want to go over some of the things they change in the winter update. Um, and then at the end, you can kind of watch some gameplay and go from there. So the first big change that happened in the winter update was for the character creation screen. They seem to have added a lot more face options than they had before. Um, other than that, there wasn't a lot of changes that I noticed. If other people noticed, they can put them in the comments below. Um, and the voices is my biggest hang up is there's only three male voices. So if you want to play, uh, you know, a group of all males, you're going to have two people that have different voices or the same voice. So you may have to intermingle male and female so that at least everybody has their own unique voice. Otherwise, it kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. So I'm sure down the road, they're going to add more to the character creation, which, you know, I feel like the game itself, you really want to focus on the combat and how you move tabletop to uh, this game so I'm not too hung up on the character creation now in addition with the winter update they've added a whole nother quest chain that takes you further into the story when you first played the first part of the early access when it released you kind of understood what you were doing you're picking up some crown but you didn't really understand why or what it did and this second part has pretty much doubled the content. So now you're on a much larger quest chain and you find an NPC and then she kind of guides you through some things and it keeps going and going and going until you get to the final piece, which in this video, if you want to go to the end of the video, I think it starts about 14 minutes, you'll kind of see how it all culminates uh, to the end of the second part of Early Access. Uh, but if you don't want to see that, I would not go past the 14 minute mark for this. Now, for everyone who's just seeing this video for the first time and don't know what Celasta is, uh, Celasta is basically a 5th edition rule set tabletop RPG that uses the SRD of the 5th edition rules. So what that basically means for people like me who didn't know back in the day is they don't have the rights to any licensed material from Wizards of the Coast. So anything that's in the Player's Handbook or Monster Manual or DM's Guide or Xanathar's, any of those, you're not going to find that in this game. There is a SRD that you can find on the, on the Wizards of the Coast website for Dungeons & Dragons, and it is very limited. It gives you the basic stuff you need to play the game, and that's pretty much it. So you'll notice that a lot of the characters and classes in this are very... They, they are identical to what you would play in 5th edition tabletop. But then when you start getting into like subclasses and feats and some of those things, that's when you start to notice how this game is completely different because they're not allowed to use the feats and the subclasses from the Player's Handbook, Xanar's Guard, etc. because they don't have their licensing for it. So it was a little frustrating for me because I was like, oh, I want to build this character. And instead of playing it in tabletop, I want to play it on the computer. And then you get in, you're like, well, where's this subclass? Where's this feat? And you're like, oh, well, they don't have it. But what's cool is they've created their own feats and they've created their own subclasses. And I kind of enjoy um, what they've created with some of their subclasses and their feats, which make the game a little bit more refreshing, a little bit more fun, since it's not something you can play in the tabletop. So just understand that when you get into the game. Other than that, I feel like Celasta is a much better introduction from a tabletop player to an online RPG than say Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is great for story, character building, um, that kind of stuff. But when it comes to straight up, this is how many feet my character can move. This is this is my uh, my advantage disadvantage. Here's my my ability. You know my 
my basic and my action and my bonus action, all of that. I feel like this is a much cleaner and simplified way that somebody coming from the tabletop would understand it really well. Um, when it comes to the combat and all that, it, it flows very well. Um, what they did improve with the winter update was the lighting. So when I first played in early access, there was issues with the lighting where they changed the rule set of lighting. So it always felt like you were fighting at disadvantage, which really stunk because I had a rogue and I always felt like I could never sneak attack. So I was always at disadvantage. And now with the winter update, they've changed the rules to be identical to the Dungeons and Dragons rule set. So if you guys have a light source or there's a lot of cantrips you can use, um, you can remove that uh, that whole is disadvantage thing. And I felt like I was at advantage or at regular attacks much more the second playthrough with the winter update. So that was a big change that I really enjoyed. Um, also with the winter update, they've added more creatures to fight. So when you're doing your overland travel in this game, it basically shows you traveling to the different... Uh, you know, landmarks, and in between, there's a chance of being attacked. And similar to overland travel in the tabletop, depending on if you're going fast, slow, or normal speed, it depends on if you do get attacked, if you're surprised, not surprised, etc. And of course, nighttime versus day also affects how the surprise works when you're overland travel. Um, what they did is they added some more creatures. You know, when you first played the game, you were fighting a lot of, I think they were goblins in the beginning. Um, some winged little dudes, you know, and then the Sorox. Sorox is like their main creature that you fight. And some humans and some skeletons. And towards the end, you get into fighting some vampires. Um, in the second part, with the winter update, they added in a minotaur you can fight. Uh, you definitely fight a lot more undead. Again, you know, more vampires, that kind of stuff. But they also added in orcs, which is pretty cool. I, there was not any orc encounters that I ever ran into in the original part. So they've added in more creatures that you can run into and have combat with, which I thought was, was pretty cool. Um, in addition to that, the levels. So if you were pretty much when you were done with the early access before the winter update, you could only get to level 5. Um, depending on how much you put into it, you could probably get to level 6. So in this version, you can definitely get to level 6. And depending on how much you put into it, you can probably get to level 7 if you do all the subquests and everything like that. So... You know, being able to play the game to level 6 or 7 is pretty cool, given that most campaigns and most characters end at, like, level 10. And so that's what's going to happen with this game, is that the max level for Solasta when it's all finished is going to be level 10. And so being able to get to 6 and 7 is actually pretty cool, in my opinion, um, from from just playing it and being... Because that's when you really get some cool abilities with your characters and enjoy playing the game in 5th edition, in my opinion. It's like that 5th level plus is when stuff starts to get fun. So, with the additional content, the additional monsters, they added in probably 5 or 6 more maps that you have to go into, more story, um, some more puzzles similar to what you see here, where you have to do some lights and do some light puzzles, but nothing, nothing crazy puzzle-wise. Um, but all in all... It just, it just improved what was currently in the early access. It expanded on it, and it tied it all together. In addition, um, in the early access, the Scavengers Guild was not, it was not working. And so whenever you got into a fight and they dropped, all the characters dropped like 50 things, it, you couldn't, you had to carry them off. You wanted to sell them, and you got overweight. So what the Scavengers Guild is supposed to do is wherever you leave stuff in a certain map, then after so many days, they go there, they collect it, and they bring it back. So when you go back to town or you go to a scavenger's guild hub throughout the game, then you can actually see everything that you left. You can choose to put it in your inventory at that point, or you can sell it and get the gold. It's super cool, super handy. On top of that, they also incre created like group looting. So there's like five or six dead things. You don't have to click every single bag. If you click a bag, it'll kind of understand that you want all the bags within a certain radius of that one, and it opens it all at one that you can go through and double check them. So that's that was two huge uh, um, improvements in the quality of life that were, were definitely needed, um, in my opinion. So again, this winter update has provided so much more content, pretty much double the content you had before. 
quality of life with the whole scavengers guild and mass looting versus one at a time uh, some new character creation options uh, much more in-depth story so you kind of really understand what the story is about now and in addition to all that it just added you know probably five or six more map locations to explore and fight creatures with a lot more terrain that is you know 3d terrain so it was just a lot of fun and yeah i hope you guys pick up the game so with that being said appreciate you guys watching i'm gonna stop talking now the rest of the video is just gonna be some combat and then a little bit more of the story so i hope you guys enjoy that and pick up the game please leave me any comments below if you have any questions any any comments about the game itself i do plan on making a new player's guide especially for people who have never played fifth edition D, &D i think that'll be very helpful so please you know sub click the icon in the bottom right hand corner click the little bell and then that way you know when i post another video this is van from the vaniverse gaming channel i appreciate you guys watching uh enjoy the rest of the video
Everybody freeze. Are you kidding me? Master, here I am, at last. We die, Ella. We're gonna die. What's going on here? I have tried for years to open that door. And here you are, an answer to my prayer, in the benevolence of the gods. 